Hi, welcome everybody. My name is Gretchen O'Hara. I'm the Vice President of our AI and Sustainability Strategy here at Microsoft. I'm so excited to be talking to a set of panelists around an incredible piece of work around the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and the hacks that are focused particularly on solving some of the very biggest problems. We're today focused on goal number four, quality education. And in particular, uh, this solution really focused on eBooks that are provided for, for students. And so let's just jump right in and hear a little bit more about uh, this, the, the solution, how you came up with the, with the idea, and you know, share a little bit more with the audience. So let's sort of get started. Um, maybe just to kick off, you know, talk a little bit about the goal you chose, you know, what your solution specifically is, and then what inspired you to pick it? All right. Um, hi. So uh, I personally travel a lot, and I'm lucky enough to see the world and see, like, differences in different areas. And one of the things that I've noticed is inequalities in the education system. And frankly, I think that that's kind of a shame because we're denying kids the opportunity to reach their full potential. So what we kind of did was focus on that and we sort of went into the problems and why people didn't really get the best education. So one of the things we noticed was that they don't really have access to the resources that they need. Um, so we kind of focused on how to get the books that they need and the writing utensils that they need to a bunch of like, we tried to get it to a bunch of kids in like developing areas. And um, so yeah, to try and combat this goal, I guess. In incredible. And so, um, Suming, maybe this one for you. What was your favorite part of the design process in creating the solution? Um, I love the part of um, doing the research about like the different parts of the uh, electronic devices. Um, so for me, it's a definitely a new uh, field of knowledge that I haven't learned anything of it before. So um, as I uh, look through the list and um, show and look at how the devices work, it actually linked to my own personal life that um, when I'm using my own devices that um, some of the parts in it just show how the devices are working. It's pretty interesting and um, this pro project have provided provide me the opportunity to do this in investigation, which I have never ever paid attention to. So I really love this part. I, l I love it. I love the um, really learning growth mindset to be able to uncover and, and learn something new. Um, I really appreciate you sharing that. I think people appreciate that as well. Maybe for both of you on this one, um, as you went through the process of creating your solution, um, what would you see as the biggest challenge in, in trying to find a solution against such a big, ambitious goal? Um, I'm not sure. I guess for me, one of the things was like getting down to the technical issues, like uh, the cost. Uh, so we kind of took apart like all of the pieces that we'd need and we kind of looked at the cost between them. So I think one of the like hardest part was kind of like designing the actual thing um, and seeing how that would work. Yeah, that's the same for me. And um, the other prices I can find is the retail prices. Uh -huh. So it's actually maybe higher than the actual price, but I really don't have the way of knowing the actual price are. So it really, it's really difficult for us to really calculate the actual cost. And since that's a, this huge project and um, the production will be thousands and millions. So even like a, a dollar difference would be making a huge difference. So it's definitely one of the most difficult thing for us to do the, uh, to do the pro project. Really incredible insight. I mean, you think about something as just even a dollar unit price and what the implication can be and could be 
all of a sudden cost prohibitive or be another barrier actually to the solution. So I think really interesting to think about what those look like and, and how you overcame that. Uh, you know, one of the things that I'm learning through these projects um, and talking to some of the um, uh, additional winners was that, uh, you know, when you focus on a particular goal, in this case, quality education, did you encounter, you know, any intersectionality with your solution? Did you did you find yourself like focusing here, but having an impact or a reliance or dependence on any of the other goals? Yeah, for sure. That's also one of the reasons why we chose our goal, because we knew that by kind of like focusing on education, that will help with a bunch of the other goals. So um, some of the goals that we kind of were like subconsciously, you know, working towards also was uh, gender equality by giving these books to everyone in all of these areas and like climate action, because instead of the actual printouts of books, they're kind of electronic books. Um, so it kind of saves resources and paper. And then another thing was like goal one, no poverty, um, because we kind of gave everyone or trying to give everyone the chance to get an education. And by doing that, I think that would help them get jobs. And our other goal would be to, um, like another goal we wanted to do was make the production in these developing areas, which would help with goal eight and nine, decent work and economic growth and industry innovation and infrastructure. So I think that we were kind of also focusing on a bunch of other goals too. I, I love that coming out. I'm assuming any other thoughts around sort of how you saw these come together with dependencies or sort of opportunity to, to help with other goals? Um, I think education is really a huge thing that it really helps with many other things. Like um, with education, um, people are able to get a job and they are able to um, searching for a better life than they are living now. Um, it is really not a only an individual thing, but also a country or a region thing that um, improvement, improve on education can also lead to improvement in other, uh, many other uh, fields that uh, uh, like countries will have uh, so for example, countries have an average of longer years of education. It's usually those ones are being called the developed countries. Mm -hmm. um, so that means education is really contributed to many other development in the country. Yeah, I, I, I love the insight, you know, and when you think about something as important and foundational as quality education, the impact to really break generational poverty and be able to provide sort of a route and a route out to some solving some of these other challenges is is so spot on. It's sometimes, you know, the umbrella of many of many of these things. So I, I love that you guys have that focus focus here. You know, you both come from from international backgrounds. Uh, and so I'd love to, you know, how do you see your solution to education infecting inequalities in youth education? Um, cause our, um, yeah, cause our, um, ebook is for everyone. So it provide everyone, uh, easier access to education, which it, which lead, which make them have the equal opportunity to get educated. And then after they are being educated, they are able to have a better income job, which because they are skilled and they're, they, they are able to um, work in, um, with, with, the, with their skills and they're able to get a better income. And that would also lead, lead to a lot of other things that um, are also contributed to um, um, solving the inequality problem in the country. Amazing. Amazing in terms of the impact, the think, the broad thinking, um, the intersection with, with the other uh, groups. So I'm going to go into a little bit of a lightning round. You don't know what I was going to ask, so this will be fun. What is, just really quick, what is your favorite subject in education? Yeah. 
you can just just jump um, out. What, what do you think that is? I'm I'm kind of a science people, so I really, really love math and science, and also I'm a big fan of economics, and I love to know about uh like all the things going around the world and um knowing about how things works not only by the perspective of science but also um knowing about how human beings are acting and how things in our societies are working it's pretty interesting to do these science subjects love it hannah what about you yeah, I personally like geography and humanities um, and kind of learning about the past and how things are changing and our future and things like that. Incredible. So, you know, as we wrap this, I think one, learning some insight and in how you're thinking about the problem, how the obstacles that you overcame and, and really the solution set that's going to make an impact. If you're going to give a piece of advice to the listeners here today, um, whether to get involved or how they should get started, what would be the piece of advice that you've learned through this journey to everyone listening on how they might get involved in, in UN's SDG goals? I think that I would say that, you know, just kind of try, I guess. Um, we kind of didn't really think about making this before, but we did it. We kind of came up with this product and prototype and we thought it was uh, very fun. So we think that just kind of trying things and thinking about what you can do to help others in the world would kind of be a good start. Um, I think to absorb in your life, like there are so many details or so many things you kind of ignore in your life could be really a thing that um, could be a solution to some of the uh, the problems that you've met or others maybe met. So really pay attention to these minor things. I think it could really help. I love it. Thank you both for sharing what your learning journey was, how you really approached the the challenge, the solution, and then, you know, to your point, the lessons learned and, and what advice you'd give to others. And, and I love the summary. And, and remember, it's a lot of the little things and those little things can all amount to very, very big things and a very big impact. So thanks for calling that out. Really appreciate it. Um, thank you both for joining and sharing your stories and congratulations again.